Hi folks, my name is David Mangan. I'm the Veteran Service Officer here in the town of Wakefield. And Governor Charles Baker has proclaimed Veterans Day, a proclamation by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11th, 1918, armistice was signed in the forest of Campania by the Allied Nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars. After four years of conflict, and whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nations have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. And whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedoms. And whereas in November 2020, the world will commemorate the 102nd anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I. At 11 a.m., November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2020 to be Veterans Day, and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of the event and participate fittingly in its observance. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dan Benjamin. I've uh, been a lifelong resident of Wakefield. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, a uh, veteran of the Vietnam War. Um, my story basically begins uh, in June of 66 when I graduated from high school. About 30 days later, I wasn't going to college or anything. My, my family really didn't have the money for me to go to schools or anything, but I uh, received a large envelope in the mail and it was welcome to the U.S. Army basically. And it was for a pre-induction physical. That was one month after I graduated. Um, I went in for the physical and uh, passed it, and I was one of the first two people in Wakefield that was drafted for the Vietnam War. Um, after that, they had lottery numbers and uh, uh, chances to, to go into the military. Um, I was drafted, and in uh, September, like 60 days after that, I got an induction notice. After that, another 60 days, um, I went to basic training at uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey during uh, Christmas. Um, I trained there for eight weeks for uh, basic training in AIT and a couple of weeks of Vietnam training and was uh, immediately shipped over to Vietnam. Um, took a plane from Boston to Oakland, from Oakland to Travis Air Force Base. Um, we traveled from there to uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, from Hawaii to Clark Air Base in the Philippines, which I think right now it doesn't exist because I think it was covered by a volcano uh, many years ago. From the Philippines to Okinawa, Japan. Um, Okinawa, Japan to Pleiku in the central highlands of Vietnam, um, where I experienced the first night I was there, a mortar attack. Um, from there I went to Cameron Bay, uh, Benoit Air Base, Long Ben. Um, from there we went to a replacement center uh, at just outside of Tonsonudia Base in the Saigon and it was called uh, Camp Alpha and there uh, 
with some of my friends from basic training that were from this area. Uh, ironically, I wanted to talk to my friend and he was further up in line with me and I swapped places with another guy uh, in line and uh, both of us went to the same place, the replacement station, which was nice to have a friend with you. Um, I went to that first unit in Vong Tau and uh, from there, within 30 days, we were shipped up river, up the Mekong River to a uh, camp called Dong Tam Base, uh, which was the base camp for the uh, 9th Infantry Division and was also the center for the Mobile Riverine Force that operated up and down the Mekong River. Um, there we uh, received many times mortar attack and rocket attack. Uh, after I was there a few weeks, I unfortunately saw my first death in Vietnam and it was my first sergeant who was hit by shrapnel from uh, a mortar round. And it kind of showed me, uh, woke me up and said, hey, this is the real thing here. This is life or death. And uh, over the proceeding, I think I was there at Dong Tam for nine months. Um, we were mortared many times and rocketed many times. We lost many people that were in my company uh, through uh, being wounded or um, being killed in action. Um, to this day, I still keep a picture and uh, the date of that time when my first sergeant was, was killed um, in my wallet and it brings back memories and he's on that war, uh, the war memorial in Washington, the Vietnam Wall. And uh, someday I hope maybe I can get there to see it. Um, I stayed in Vietnam. I was there doing the Tet Offensive, which was probably the biggest offensive in Vietnam at the time. We were mortared for about, mortared and rocketed probably for a month and a half every single day, all times of the day. Um, I stayed in Vietnam uh, for that nine months. And uh, finally, when I... Uh, Basically, uh, got out of Vietnam. Uh, I actually met up with some of the people that I had met at Camp Alpha that were my friends from basic training. And I said, um, the guy that I replaced, his name was Sopic. And I said, where's, where's Sopic? And they said, he was killed in action in uh, Vietnam several months ago. And, you know, I look at that and I say, and I changed places with him in line. Could that have been me? But fate is fate. And, you know, I'm here today and I'm uh, proud of my service. Um, from Vietnam, uh, we came back to the United States. Um, it was during a time when uh, many protests and things were going on, much like today. Um, the country was split. But uh, I came back and I went to Fort Hood, Texas, and was assigned to the headquarters and headquarters company of the 2nd Armored Division. Um, which was General Patton's old division. And we used to look out at one of his old tanks from World War II out on the front lawn. But uh, from there at Fort Hood, uh, we almost were sent to Chicago when they were having the Chicago riots. And uh, that scared me uh, to be, you know, with a rifle in front of our own, you know, citizens of the United States. Uh, that really bothered me. But uh, I finally, you know, uh, spent my time, my two years, in the Army, came back to the United States. Um, I've, ever since I've been trying to do things for veterans that I could. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to do it in the background. Uh, I don't like to use, you know, the word veteran status to, to get anything that I'm not entitled to. But uh, lately I've been, you know, using the VA and I couldn't ask for people that were better to me than the people I've met at the VA and especially in Bedford. Um, I now suffer from uh, prostate cancer from Agent Orange and um, getting benefits from the VA for that. Um, whether all this was caused from Vietnam or not, we'll never know, but years from now, we'll probably really find out. And uh, all I wish on this Veterans Day is that people think of the veterans and, and uh, we did a lot for us. We took two years of our lives in our, in our prime and gave it to our country. And I'm very proud of that. And I'm very proud of all the people in Wakefield that I see up on the memorials in Wakefield, up at Forest Glade, that they did that for me. And hopefully people will honor me 
years to come from now. Um, I thank you very much, and please, please, do whatever you can for veterans. They, they did what they could for you. Do it for them. And I know this is, uh, right now we're promoting the Reese Across America. And if you could during the holiday season, you know, spend $15 and, and give it to Reese Across America and give a gift for this holiday season to a veteran. And, you know, I can't think of anything better to do for a gift for a veteran than, than get a gift like that for Reese Across America. They do a great job. And all I can say is God bless America and thank you very much. Hello, my name is Paul Cancellari. Uh, I'm an Army veteran, served 24 years of active duty in the United States Army, uh, in the United States Army as an infantry officer. Uh, my service began uh, in New York at graduating from Hofstra University with a commission as a second lieutenant. I uh, served over in Germany. Uh, I served at Fort Stewart, Georgia, uh, back over to Germany served again uh, in the Middle East, uh, served in Africa, Italy, uh, overall uh, 15 countries and four continents uh, in the span of that 24 years. Um, I'm a father, I'm a dad, I've got five kids. Uh, we landed here in Wakefield, Massachusetts in 1996 and I had a terrific assignment down at Boston University as a uh, professor of military science. Uh, teaching cadets and uh, commissioning cadets to be commissioned officers in the United States Army. Uh, it was a great career. I just want to share a personal story about my time as a veteran and a citizen here in Wakefield, Massachusetts. And uh, I received orders to do an unaccompanied assignment over in the Middle East in Saudi Arabia. And I had to leave my family behind. And this was the first time that I left my family not on a military installation. They were here in Wakefield. The community actually stepped up. My, uh, as a dad, I was concerned about my sons and my daughter, and um, the community allowed us an opportunity to, for my children to participate in sports. Um, the education that the uh, children received at St. Joseph's School was second to none, and uh, there was a tremendous amount of support locally for my wife. Uh, to help her in a time where we were separated while I was overseas in Saudi Arabia. Uh, those activities I hold with great esteem and value, uh, super organizations here in town. Uh, and uh, I couldn't have done that assignment uh, without knowing the family was safe and the family was engaged uh, in the community. So I do appreciate that from the community here in Wakefield, Massachusetts. And uh, just a note for everybody, the military is a great career. Uh, the most significant event, in my opinion, that our military has gone through is the switch from being a drafted force to an all-volunteer force. The soldiers today volunteer to serve our country, uh, and they volunteer to uh, go overseas and they're doing a lot of great work. It's a big organization. It's a big task. It's a big ask. It's a service, and it's a service to our nation. Thank you very much, and uh, happy Veterans Day.
honoring our veterans. Veterans Day means freedom, sacrifice, and honor for those who served in the military. It also means to give thanks to people who served. We should be brave and strong hard when we meet veterans. Without Veterans Day, many Americans would forget them and the sacrifice that they've made. Veterans Day is intended to honor and thank all military personnel who served in the United States in all wars. On this day, particularly living veterans. It is marked by parades and church services, and in many places, the American flag is hung at half mast. Veterans are special because of who they are. They're special because they have the courage to fight. Veterans put other people before themselves. They protect their families, your family, and the innocent. When we serve our nation, secure our freedom, and fight for the foundation of liberty, we sacrifice our lives with the notion that our intent will never be in vain. For the soldier is the vanguard, the front line, if you will, of our defense at home and abroad, so that our families, children, elderly, and disabled may live out the dreams of our forefathers and our warriors of freedom. As such, when during times of conflict, the brave, the fearless, the unselfish individual charges into battle to ensure these liberties. They are the been there, done that, who in some cases have a thousand yard stare, looking into their past, trying to recover their youth, or who sometimes will not move at a green light in traffic as they ponder over the sacrifices made by their comrades who never returned from battle. Veterans Day is to honor these individuals who at one time in their lives gave up everything for a period of time not knowing if they would survive and return to their loved ones, their communities, or their home. Some returned with visible battle scar losses, others with hidden scars deep within their souls. The military is the salvation of freedom based on the sacrifices made by so many. The last full measure of devotion to freedom is to serve the greater need towards liberty and justice for all. Thanks for your service is a common phrase we hear more of these days when we cross the path of a veteran wearing distinctive markers of their time served, a hat, a shirt, a jacket, and many of them by virtue of the warrant to remind us of sacrifice that their own brothers in arms endured. And some remain humble, a cashier at a supermarket, a teacher, a bus driver, or a CEO of a big company who only share when they're invited to. These men and women have strengthened our confidence and given us all a secure foundation on which to build a better America by their sacrifices. So today, recognize your American brothers and sisters who have shared their love for you by a smile and have a meaningful day. Thank you very much. God bless America. Good afternoon, folks. My name is David Mangan. I'm the Veteran Service Officer here in the town of Wakefield. I've been doing this now for about a year and a half, and I cannot tell you how satisfying of a position it is as a retired veteran uh, to help other veterans. Being a veteran of the Vietnam War, many of the benefits when we came back weren't available to us, but now they are. So uh, many of the benefits for uh, Iraqi veterans, Kuwait, 
Desert Storm, or just being a veteran, even in the National Guard after certain periods of time. We have a town with many veterans in it. We are a Purple Heart town where many veterans have sacrificed the pain and agony of the wars. But I want to tell you this. There's no more encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability of a nation to elevate itself than by its conscious endeavors and appreciating the veterans we have in our town, in our state, in our nation is something that we should all value very highly. I want to tell you a little story here. I want to actually read it. It was from an email that I got. It's about a teacher. In September of 2005, on the first day of school, Martha Cawthorn, a history teacher in Robinson High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, did something not to be forgotten. On the first day of school, with the permission of the school superintendent, the principal, and the building supervisor, she removed all the desks in her classroom. When the first period kids entered the room, they discovered there were no desks. Miss Cawthorn, where are our desks? She replied, you can't have a desk until you tell me how you earn the right to sit at a desk. Well, they thought, well, maybe it's our grades. No, she said, maybe it's our behavior. She told them, no, it's not even your behavior. And so they came and they went the first period, second period, third period. Still no desks in the classroom. Kids called their parents to tell them what was happening, and by early afternoon, television news crews had started gathering at the school to report about this crazy teacher who had taken all the desks out of her room. The final period of the day came, and as, she puzzled, as the puzzled students found seats on the floor of the deskless classroom, Martha Cawthorn said, throughout the day, no one has been able to tell me just what he or she has done to earn the right to sit at the desks that are ordinarily found in this classroom. Now I'm going to tell you, at this point, Martha Cawthorn went over to the door of her classroom. She opened it. 27 U.S. veterans, all in uniform, walked into that classroom, each one carrying a school desk. The vets began placing the, desk, uh, the school desk in rows. Then they would walk over and stand alongside the wall. By the time the last soldier had set the final desk in place, those kids started to understand, perhaps for the first time in their lives, just how the right to sit at those desks had been earned. Martha said, you didn't earn the right to sit at these desks. These heroes did it for you. They placed the desks here for you. They went halfway around the world, giving up their education and interrupting their careers and families so you could have the freedom you have. Now it's up to you to sit in them. It is your responsibility to learn, to be good students, to be good citizens. They paid the price so that you could have the freedom to get an education. Don't ever forget it. By the way, this is a true story. And this teacher was awarded the Veterans of Foreign Wars Teacher of the Year for the state of Arkansas in 2006. She is the daughter of a World War II prisoner of war. Let us always remember the men and women of our military and the rights they have won for us. If you haven't been to Washington, D.C., and I suggest you go there at some point in time, you should go to the memorials that are set up there for the veterans that have passed in conflict from the many conflicts we've had fighting for our freedoms and securing the democracy we have today. Yes, right now, it is a trying time. Our country is divided in many ways. And this is not good. We have always come back. Even back in the 60s and 70s, I've witnessed the re, uh, regrouping of our nation in a wonderful way. But in the process, the veterans of our nation, those who sacrificed, who gave up everything to go to war, to battle, or to secure the domestic tranquility that we enjoy today, to have our education, to have the freedoms we share not to be in by, run by tyrants, but to have the freedoms we have of speech. Let me tell you this one more thing, if I may. Service to this nation and your gifts you get from it and give to it are wonderful. You get benefits as a veteran, many wonderful benefits, education, 
housing, various, various things that are wonderful. So come and see me at 30 Converse Street, the old senior center, or the new senior center, actually, the old high school, elementary school, I'm sorry. And uh, I'll be there. Uh, I'll go to the website and get the information from that point. Thank you very much. My name is David Mangan.